Hey everybody, how you doing? Um, it's going to be a super quick video this week because I'm recording this on the day I'm meant to release it and that's because I've been rushed on my feet doing two or three jobs at the same time. Yay! Now what we're going to cover is FrameFlex and its main uses um, in Avid Media Composer. So let's get started. So in Media Composer, if you have brushes that differ from the resolution of your timeline, so here my project um, is a bit unusual. It's actually a 1998 by 1080, so it's a DCI flat. Um, that's a 185 aspect ratio. Um, but my rushes here are in UHD. So that would be 3840 by 2160. So that's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So I'm going to show you how we would format this so that we can start cutting and working with it. Um, because uh, it's going to be slightly askew, slightly off, if we just start throwing it in. Um, so here's one of the clips here, um, but I'm going to close that and uh, grab all of these. And we just right-click and go Source Settings. Now this is essentially like opening up the effects controls in Premiere. It's the same kind of idea. We can tinker with things like formatting, aspect ratio, squeezing, um, you know, position in the frame, stuff like that. So up here in this area, we've got our controls and information to do with the source clip. Uh, down here, we've got more uh, controls to do with how we can alter the clip and make it fit within our project frame. And then over to the right, we've got two viewers. Uh, the top one is the source clip. Um, and, you know, we've got some controls of a frame we can move around there. And the bottom one is uh, our project frame. So this is what it'll look like. It will give us a live preview as we change things. Now up here, we have controls and information to do with the source image. Um, so that's showing us our image size, um, which we can try and change and squeeze to something else. And just so as you know, if you've ever you know set it to something that's not correct, you want to resize it, just hit this button here and it will reset it to the actual image size and aspect ratio of the source clip. You can try changing the aspect ratio, uh, like so. Now you notice when I change the aspect ratio just there, it's changed the pixel aspect ratio. Um, so it's not one-to-one -one anymore. And what that means is it's doing some amount of squeezing um, if if your pixel aspect ratio is one-to-one. -one. And the way to avoid that is down here where we have our reformat option. So this is like when you do your resizes um, and your conforms, how it's going about it. Um, I, I don't know why stretch is a default. I, I always try to stay away from stretch, um, which is what's going to stretch to fit the frame based on whatever changes you make. Um, I like to keep this as pillar box, letter box. Now our other options there were uh, center crop. Um, so it'll move around the center and it'll crop anything else. Um, and you have center keep size. But I'm gonna keep with pillar box, letter box for now because I wanted to fit in my frame nicely. Um, and I'm gonna put this back to where it was. So 16 by nine. Now I had mentioned before that my project is 185. So how I'm going to get this to fit properly, to a degree, within my uh, project um, is to change my frame aspect ratio to 185. Now you notice there that when I change my frame aspect ratio, so this is the aspect ratio that I'm working with, that I want on my timeline, to 185, this bounding box that is around our source clip frame uh, shortened a little bit. And so that's it's basically changing the aspect ratio of this box to, to reflect what we're working with. Um, now, because our source clip is 16 by 9 and we want to work with uh, 185 and we don't want any stretching, then this is the frame that we have to work with, with those one-to-one -one pixels. Um, now, we can move this frame, like if you want to get the absolute bottom in there or the absolute top. But for now, I'm just going to leave it centered because we're not really losing much. And now, once I hit apply down here, I'm just going to hit apply to all, so it applies to all the clips in that bin. That will be my frame. So this is the part of the frame that will show up whenever I'm using it in any of my monitors. Um, you know, we have, we have it reformatted to fit within this raster now, and we're all hunky-dory. Now at this point, I'm going to say that is the primary purpose of FrameFlex. It is to conform shots uh, to the correct sizing and shape um, to fit within your project um, raster dimensions that you're working with. And while the clip will show up um, on all clips um, on your timeline that don't match your, your project settings, um, and you can open it in Effect Editor on the timeline, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you um, use this for resizes and, and uh, you know keyframing and stuff like that. You can do it. You know it'll let you add keyframes here, 
Um, and, you know, like, like I could add a keyframe there and add another one there. And then for the end keyframe, I could, you know, zoom in a bit on him. Um, and then when I come out of there, we're going to get a, a zoom in across the shot. And it's going to get a bit tighter on his face. Now that may be hard to see because the shot is kind of handheld and moving around, but there is there is a zoom in happening across that shot there. But the reason why I definitely wouldn't recommend you do this is because um, unlike 3D warp and uh, the resize effect, stuff like that, um, frame flex adjustments don't necessarily come across in AAFs when you send to online. Um, so when you send it to online, those resizes and stuff that you've made on the timeline uh, won't uh, won't necessarily show up, and you're going to have to make make sure and, and trust that your online guys will recreate them exactly as you've made it in the edit. Now you may be wondering why I'm actually bringing up this effect at all if I, I don't want you to use it. And then that is because the advantage that this effect has over 3D warp and resize and things like that is that it utilizes the entire resolution. So what that means is that if you're doing a resize on a shot, say to frame out a boom mic, um, you wouldn't see any resolution drop um, on if you're using FrameFlex to do the zoom in on like say a 4K shot on a 1080p timeline um, and you're just zooming in a little bit to reframe out the boom. Whereas if you use 3D Warp to do your zoom in, um, you might get a bit of pixelation. And that is because it's reading a, like a 1080p preview of the clip and zooming in on that. But I would still recommend you, you use the 3D Warp for the purposes of your edit and just know that in online it, it, you have the resolution there and it'll look a bit better. Also, just as a side note, just because you have four times the resolution in 4K it does not mean that you can zoom in four times. Um, I generally stick to a rubber rule of about 20%. Um, so I will zoom in and, and reframe stuff if I have to. Um, you know, don't do it willy-nilly. You don't don't want to disrespect your cinematographer. But uh, I'll zoom in at about uh, 20% as a maximum um, to, to reframe and to frame out booms or stuff like that. Um, but I don't, I don't like to go any more or any more than that. You know, even if the resolution is there, because the bit depth and the quality might might not be there, and that might start to show if you if you zoom further in. Uh, now, one last thing I'll add to this is that if you have to adjust your frame flex um, in, in the bin, you know, say you haven't done the conform right and, and they want these to be zoomed in, like all of them to a certain level or reframed differently. And so you make your adjustments in the bin. So I'll make a change to this one here. Zoom in a bit just to the center of the shot, just so there's a difference. Um, and you, you've made your change. Then uh, how to get this to show up on the timeline is you just need to do a refresh. So right click on your sequence, come down here to refresh sequence. Um, and then there's all these different elements that you can refresh if you only want to tinker with one thing. Uh, but most of the time I'm refreshing everything when I do this. I'll just hit all and we see the zoom in tick effect there. So yeah, that's just something to bear in mind. Uh, well, FrameFlex is one effect that's, that's sort of always available to any shots where the resolution doesn't match your timeline. Um, uh, applying that effect in the bin um, and applying it in the sequence, um, they, they are a bit different and they do take effect at different times. So you want to do all your conforms first before, as you ingest, like right after ingesting your shots, um, bef before you start putting it onto sequences and get it right there. And if you need to make adjustments later, just make the adjustment in the bin and then refresh your sequence and it'll take effect. Any, and likewise, any frame flex adjustments that are done on the sequence will only be represented on that sequence. Right, now just to recap everything and to show it in a setting that you're probably more likely to use, I've changed my project here to 1080p, which is the most common uh, resolution of Avid projects around the world. Um, and I've linked in a bunch of ARRI test footage, which conveniently comes a whole bunch of different uh, raster dimensions and aspect ratios. So let's pick one that's a bit different here. How about uh, this one here, 204 8 by 815 I think that's scope. So if I open up the source settings on that one, then you can see it's already done most of the work for me. So it's calculated that it's 204 8 by 858 and that's our image size. Uh, the aspect ratio of that is 239, it's telling me. Um, it's saying it's, it's currently one-to-one -one pixel ratio, so it's not reformatting really anything. And it's giving me a 239 frame to work with um, to put into the project. Um, so at the moment it's stretching that to fit in the actual project sequence framing. Um, but I just want it to pillar box it. And there we go. Um, I'd be perfectly happy with that. That would be it formatted correctly. Um, so, so you'll see the difference if I cancel this. 
and then take a look. This is a little bit stretched. Whereas if I apply the change that I was about to do there, so put a box, apply, okay. That looks much better. So that's more correctly formatted with one-to-one -one pixels um, and I'd be ready to use that in a 1080p timeline. Right, uh, what about one uh, like this, 2880 by 2160? So take a look at this one in here. So that's a four by three frame um, at what looks like, you know, a bit under 4K. I don't know if that's like, this is, this is about 3K, I think. Um, so we've got plenty of resolution to work with here. Um, and we're in a 1080p timeline. So the two ways that you could deal with this is firstly to just do what we did before and we'll pillar box, letter box. Um, and then you've got one to one pixel aspect ratio. Um, but with giant bars on the left and right, you could work like that if you want. Um, it would be properly aligned and framed. Or what I'd probably be more likely to do since we've got so much, um, uh, you know, pixel area to work with here is that I would just change my frame aspect ratio to 16 by 9 and then, um, this would be my frame that I've got to work with. Um, so I would just frame that in a way that I like. It looks nice to me. And you can use this slider here to jump through the shot um, to make sure um, that you're applying this correctly. There's nothing really much different. I think this is a static shot. Um, and yeah, I would probably go with that if I was working on a 1080p timeline. Um, and then this gives you the option to sort of resize and reframe to fit, you know, what part of the shot you want to use. So yeah, frame flex is, is a really useful tool for conforming shots and getting them to fit in the uh, raster dimensions that we're working with in our project. So bear in mind that the primary use for this is working in a project with material that differs from the resolution settings that you have. Or if you're working with a bunch of different footage that where the resolution varies. Um, you know, and you want to conform it all correctly to fit within your um, timeline. It's not really for doing resizes on the timeline um, and keyframes and stuff like that as well. It can do it and it will preserve more your resolution so it might look slightly better. You know, it can cause a bit more of a headache when transitioning to online as those may have to be manually recreated at that end, unfortunately. But yeah, I think that sums up FrameFlex enough for us today. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Double thank you to uh, Patreon subscribers. Um, you know, they were recently treated to a, a full tour around my workspace and, and all of my, um, you know, purchase decisions and what I've put together, the software I've used, all of my hardware. Um, yeah, that, that, you know, that took a while to record, including me crawling under the desk. Um, and for any of you who did see it, I promise I did do a full dust cleaning afterwards. So sorry you had to see that. Very, very sorry. Yeah, it it's normally looks better than that. And if any of the rest of you want to, want to check out how dusty or not dusty uh, my setup is and, and what I use, you can, you can check that out over on Patreon. Or if not, I will see you next time for the next video. Thank you very much, guys. Bye.